So, hi, my name is Martin Zeckel and in, in this video I will present my stock evaluation project I've been working on from end 2014 until, well, until today, because it's a project that's never really finished. I'll tell you a bit about how it evolved, how it works and what it's used for. However, I'll try to stay concise because hopefully after the video you should have a general overview about what this whole thing is about. So what is the sheet actually about? Basically the whole Excel workbook was designed with the purpose of getting an evaluation for stocks that is as useful as possible. In this workbook we're dealing with mid caps. Mid caps, what does, what does that mean? That means we're analyzing the data of companies that have a market capitalization that is lower than five billion dollars or euros, depending on in which monetary area this company is settled. Um, how was the idea actually created? The idea for this project was created when I was reading a book about stock portfolio strategies in 2014. The book is called Der entspannte Weg zum Reichtum, what is German and means something like a relaxed way to wealth. Um, this book was written by Susan Leverman, she's a former force manager. She describes a way of valuing stocks with consideration of several criteria to be able to decide which stock to buy and which stocks not to buy. This approach is called stock picking. The problem with this strategy was not the strategy itself, but more the way of analyzing the required data. In the book, it was proposed to do all this analyzing manually with, with a sheet of paper and a pen. But Regarding that this data analysis has to be done quite frequently, I thought to myself uh, about an easier way to do all this effort. So that was actually the moment when I got the idea to implement a strategy based data analysis in Microsoft Excel. Well, b because once implemented, Excel will take over the work for me. Now let's have a hook. Have, now let's have. Now let's have a look on how it works. First, we'll have a look at the checklist. It's now important to know that the valuation that I'm doing works with a credit system. Herefore, we have different criteria listed at the left hand side of the table. These are different key figures, like the return on equity as we have it at the up at the, the top here, or yield revisions as well as reactions on quarterly reports or analyst opinions. So as we can see the valuation considers economical as well as psychological aspects because this was made to ensure a quite realistic and temporal appropriate valuation. Now every stock gets valuated by these criteria. The results can be as following. If the stock performs well, we'll give one credit. If the stock performs badly, we will subtract a credit and if the stock performs averagely, we will give zero credits, what means we don't change the score. So here we can see the requirements that I've set for the different criteria. Let's just make a short example. We have a look at the return on equity from the last year. Um, let's assume the return of equity from a stock amounts to 30%. If you now take a look at our checklist, we see that we are even better than the required 20%. So in this case, we would give plus one credit for a concerning stock value. At the bottom of this table, we find another something very important. Here I'm defining how many credits a stock value has to have to be bought or at which point we have to sell it again. So at this 
side we can see the, the so-called functional table. This table uh, contains the same values as the checklist but with a difference that's in a format Excel can work with. So later we will have to set references to these criteria and that's the reason I created the functional table. So let's now go to the stock valuation sheet. Actually it's a big table that contains data as well as the given credits. At the left hand side we can see uh, the different criteria from the checklist. At the top of the table we find the company names whose stocks we are evaluating. Um, basically here we'll find a mix of American and German mid-caps companies because well that's due to my personal interests. Um, now the reach credits of every stock get aggregated and we can see the score at the bottom of the table. So every cell filled with green is now a clue on a potential candidate for our stock portfolio. But more on that later. Let's now have a short look at the buttons. The buttons have different purposes, as you can see in their names. I would just have to I would just like to have a closer look at the button at the right, the add new stock button. Because implementing a new stock to get evaluated is not that simple in this workbook, because the data sheet has to be generated, the references have all to be set and the list has to be extended. Doing this for every single stock this is, this is quite much effort. So that's why I created a macro implemented in a user form that takes over this work for me. All I have to actually do is to provide the well to provide this user form with the required information. So this is in detail the stock name, the website we get our data from, the ID every website uses and the ISIN of the stock. The macro is doing the rest. So let's just do a short example to show how this user form works. Let's assume we want us to add the stock for the Amazon.com Inc. So I just type in Amazon and tell the website, website we will take Börse.de, that's a German website. We set the IDs and the ISIN, the ISIN is U S O two three one three five one O six seven. So well Amazon is no, actually not a mid cap but I'll just take this stock to show how the user form works. So I click off OK. We can see something is going on here. takes a minute and tsk, here is the Amazon stock freshly evaluated. It's also where I expected it in the first free cell in this column there was this one everything alright it got a score of minus one so it doesn't perform that well with our strategy. Mm. Now we'll go on to the center part of the workbook. It's the portfolio simulation. Through the stock evaluation we have now the information that we need to buy or sell different stocks. This is what happens here. I'm literally simulating a custody account and how its values evolve. This was actually not part of the book but I wanted to find a way to prove that the strategy we're working with is also generating benefits. So developing this portfolio simulation was crucial to me, in fact. At first let me talk about the different tables. 
Most important is the current portfolio table. Here all stock values get listed that have made it into our portfolio and as we can see there are not many these times. It's only the Axel Springer and the Kronos stock. So only these two fulfill enough criteria to reach the required score. As we can see it's not a first period that we hold these stocks in the portfolio if we take a look at the status. So they had already been bought and according to their score they are still kept in the portfolio. The table left of our current portfolio lists all the stocks that have reached enough credits to be bought or at least to be held. So the linear technology for example has four credits that's enough to be held if it would be in the portfolio but it is too less to get into the portfolio. So let's just do a short test. Let's assume that the linear technology stock had one credit more. So it would be five and we can see we would buy it. So another example if the Axel Springer if the Axel Springer stock had one credit less, it wouldn't be listed at all. So let's try this. Not listed and as we can see we would have to sell it for this price. So these ones are just additional information. It's, it's not essential for the workload we're doing but it's some useful and interesting information about our portfolio and the current value develop, current value development. So in contrary of this ones, these macro buttons are indeed essential. So again, these buttons take over a lot of work for us. Let's just go through them. The first one copies the stocks that were in the new stocks in period T table the last time we refreshed it. So more specifically it freezes the stocks that reach the required score to get into the portfolio or to be held in it the last time we checked the stocks. So with the refresh button we do exactly what it sounds like. We refresh the stocks that fulfill the requirements. Now if you remember we changed something in our new stock table. So after the macro ran through everything should look exactly as it did before. Let's just have a let's just have this as a test. It needs some time to run through. And ta -da, as we can see everything is exactly as it was before. With the third button I'm freezing the buying rates of the stocks. So um, in this case now we would not buy any stocks. So to demonstrate how it works we just make a little change again and say the linear technology stock reached five credits again. And we see we would have to buy it. Now let's just run through the macro. And as we can see what the button does is it's freezing the information. Now here it's exactly as we can see it here. We would have to pay this price for amount one of linear technology buying it and the, that would be the board value and this is the current value. The board value is frozen. So let's go on to the last button. It's the calculate balance button. Um, 
this button will do changes in the total revenue balance table. Mm, this is this one is here. There you can see the absolute and relative total revenue balance that gets updated with every refresh since the day the portfolio was created. So additionally I've just implemented another table that lists the relative total revenue balances every time it gets calculated. So this is for to ensure that we can see how our portfolio and the total revenue balance evolves over the months. So let's just do a small hint here. Let's assume we would sell our Cronus stock. It would look as the following. Cronus sell, we would get this price for. And now let's calculate the balance. Calculate balance. As we can see, at the 20th of January 2016, we've made 3.66% plus because of our Corona selling, with which one we had a quite positive uh, result. So, on the whole, this was the most important information about my stock evaluating project. There would be much more to describe, let alone the explanation of the VBA, VBA programming, but I hope this helps to understand what the workbook is about and why it was created. It's, it's another very good example how a simple idea evolves and get better by and by. To me it was quite awesome because I could see the progress from a simple idea to a realized useful tool. And even more than this it was and it still is a valuable advantage of experience for me. So hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.